Welcome to this webinar. Before we begin the presentation, I want to provide you with a few housekeeping items. On your screen, you will see a taskbar with icons. Each icon is assigned to a particular element of today's webinar. After the webinar is over, please take our survey to tell us how we've done. Throughout the presentation, you can network with others or submit questions to the speakers in the box next to the slides. Download resources from the folder icon. Today's event is being recorded and archived and will be available within 24 hours. For on-demand questions or comments, send us an email by clicking email us. If you experience any technical issues today, please refresh your browser by hitting F5 for a PC or Command R for Macs, or email webinars at bmpmedia.com for one-on-one -on -one support. And now I'm excited to turn it over to today's moderator. Good afternoon and welcome to the biggest challenges facing manufacturing and distribution and tips to overcome them. This event is brought to you by Assembly Magazine and sponsored by ITEM. I'm your moderator, John Sprovieri, the Chief Editor of Assembly Magazine. Thanks for making us a part of your day. Today's presenter is Matt Carter. Matt comes to Item West as a proven, principled, success-oriented sales professional who enjoys working with clients to provide successful, lean-engineered extrusion solutions to optimize production efficiency. His goal is to give each client the highest level of ethical, personalized service and attention to detail to bring about a timely, positive, and successful outcome. He is committed to providing the highest level of client service and satisfaction. Now this is a live event, so please do submit questions for our speaker. At the end of the program, Matt will address as many as possible. Today's event is being recorded and will be archived on our website. And now it's my pleasure to turn things over to today's presenter, Matt Carter. Matt. Thank you, John. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session, The Biggest Challenges Facing Manufacturing and Distribution and Tips to Overcome Them. My name is Matt Carter, and I am representing ITEM West, which is a partner of the global German organization, ITEM. My current position is quite exciting, and if anyone here follows the news, like most industries, it is also very fast-paced. I'm working on-site daily in Reno, Nevada, as a strategic account manager for Item West at the Tesla Gigafactory. This is where Tesla manufactures the batteries for both Tesla Motors vehicles and also its Powerwall and Energywall battery storage solutions for both residential and commercial applications. Please take a moment to read my biography, which is listed on this presentation, to learn more about the many interests, hobbies, and passions which have shaped me as a person and defined my career trajectory in the manufacturing industry. We'd love to hear from you. Questions are encouraged and able to be submitted during this webinar, and a few will be addressed by my colleagues during a Q&A session at the end. Due to time, those that aren't answered at the end will be followed up via email, and contact information to us will also be included. During this presentation, a few videos will be shown, and you will have full control of your own volume settings on your machine. So please, feel free to play videos at full volume. Today's agenda, we're going to cover two different sections. First, the top six tech trends driving Industry 4.0. This is the technology you need to know about the most. And then we'll talk about labor and skills. Industry 4.0. Now let's back up for a second. What is Industry 4.0? This is recognized as the fourth industrial revolution, which is the one all of us are already living in. This includes smart factories and distribution centers. As a society, all of us are affected by these processes. One example would be Amazon distribution centers, which are being fed by smart factories to optimize inventory management while also remaining agile to provide the prompt delivery service we have all become accustomed to. 
Trend number one, automation. This brings us to the first trend and the two very big things driving it. Advances in robotics. Move fluid movements with greater precision. Advancements in robotics can pick up and move things more like a human in order to perform more complex and also more delicate tasks. They're also smaller, so they can go more places and be positioned in tighter areas, even right next to people. These collaborative robots, called cobots, work alongside people to help with complex and sensitive tasks. In a recent study conducted by MIT researchers at a BMW automotive factory, human idle time was reduced by 85% when collaborating with a robot. Both humans and cobots are working in tandem to efficiently and accurately complete tasks, leveraging the best skill sets of both. This next video will show this in action. And just remember, the volume controls in the lower left-hand corner, so you're able to play it at whatever volume settings you choose. Think adding automation to your production line limits you to high cost, high volume, caged robots. Think automation requires specialized robots programmed by highly trained engineers. Well, think again. Baxter breaks out from the protective cages that contain many manufacturing robots, allowing people and robots to work side by side, doing what each does best. From machine tending to line loading to packing and unpacking, Baxter has the flexibility to be deployed and redeployed on tasks with minimal setup or integration costs. Whether there is increased customer demand or the introduction of a new product, Baxter helps you create a collaborative workforce, one with increased productivity and efficiency. Think about getting all this for a base price of $25,000. That translates into an ROI of months, not years. Now think about what Baxter could add to your plan. Rethink manufacturing. Rethink what's next. Rethink robotics. These cobots are also capable of learning. To teach that robot a new task, you just move its arm yourself. Then the robot remembers those movements and can replicate and repeat the task. This takes us to the second factor driving automation, artificial intelligence. When people talk about algorithms, this is what they mean. The rules computers follow to learn and act. The most popular example is probably in your pocket. Siri on your iPhone learns your preferences to make recommendations. In manufacturing, Artificial intelligence, or AI, can improve quality control, shorten design time, and reduce materials waste. Siemens uses AI in steel plants to analyze operating data and sensor measurements to allow it to spot anomalies and optimize their facility. Trend number two. This brings us to the second trend, the industrial internet of things. Sensors collect information about the object and its environment and share that data over the internet. It's how that artificial intelligence we're talking about gets information to learn. Your Fitbit counting your daily steps is sending that data to your phone, but the industrial applications behind it are even more impressive. In today's competitive business environment, Organizations are looking to continuously improve its offerings to create or maintain market advantages. For example, in the transportation industry, General Electric's locomotive has more than 250 sensors that measure 150,000 data points per minute, providing location, weight, speed, fuel burn, and more to improve its operational efficiency. And Airbus is just one company that is already doing the same to to track its production factories. The industrial internet of things, predictive maintenance, 
such as equipment that can tell you when a part is about to wear out, self-optimizing production, an assembly line that automatically adjusts orders from your supply chain to prevent waste, automated inventory management, a warehouse that knows the location and condition of every product, even if it hasn't arrived yet. Trend number three, digital platforms cloud-based ecosystems that facilitate exchanges between groups. Okay, so what does that actually mean? Basically, it's simply a place to share something online, such as PayPal is a digital platform for sharing money, and Facebook is a digital platform for sharing photos of your family, pets, and possibly for some this time of year, political affiliations. But manufacturers are also using digital platforms to collaborate with employees, customers, suppliers, and partners. One example is the engineering tool that will be explained in this video. Hey, what would it be like if design work could just be done online? If I could work from anywhere and shape my work to fit my life instead of the other way around? If I could share designs in seconds with all my customers and partners all over the world? If I could concentrate on the important aspects of my work. Fewer distractions. None of the endless project meetings and feasibility checks. If I could save projects and documents and use them again. And expand them individually any time. Would that not save a lot of time? And free up resources that would give my company an edge over the international competition? It would save me time too. And I could spend that time on things outside work that are important to me. What if that were all possible already? ETEM is already smoothing the path towards digital engineering to the design engineer of the future. The engineering tool will make you flexible and independent. You can draft designs and have them checked immediately if you wish. And you can order and buy them directly online as customized solutions from anywhere, anytime, without closing your browser. The ETEM engineering tool for the digital engineering of tomorrow, for the design engineer of the future. Try it out. In summary, the item engineering tool is a digital workplace to complete engineering projects directly in your internet browser with rules based engineering error correction and drag and drop functions. It's easy to position profiles and automatically place fasteners and machining work with accuracy to the millimeter. You can even transfer projects directly to your CAD environment. It's an easier way to share your designs with colleagues and partners around the world. It will change how engineers plan and design projects just like the rest of these buzzwords. Trend number four, 3D printing. 3D printing is the process of creating an object by adding material layer by layer. 3D printing for consumers and small entrepreneurs has received a great deal of publicity. However, it is in manufacturing where the technology could have its most significant commercial impact. The industrial term for this is Additive manufacturing. Additive manufacturing benefits. More efficient prototyping. The ability to create parts or entire products on demand, producing new designs that weren't possible with traditional processes, creating lighter, stronger parts and systems while reducing material waste. For example, General Electric Aviation is working on printing select jet engine parts instead of using its more traditional casting processes. This video shows another example of all the possibilities it opens up.
There's many different ways to design for additive manufacturing, or maybe more commonly known as 3D printing. One of those ways is generative design. It really takes inputs of design constraints, load requirements, keep out zones where material can't be, and it generates thousands of different design solutions working with the software that maybe a single designer or engineer couldn't come up with on their own. It's an expansion of our current capabilities, really focused on how are we going into the future with light weighting, with new manufacturing process, thinking about designing and making our vehicles in a different way. Autodesk is one of our valued partners that we see as we go forward in the additive manufacturing space, really helping us from a thinking differently, the innovation culture that they can bring to us, as well as some of the tools that they have for design for additive manufacturing. One of the first parts we worked on in collaboration with Autodesk was a common rear seat bracket. This bracket consists of eight pieces, welded together, bolted together. We worked very hard to consolidate that part into one piece, something that can only be produced using additive manufacturing. We ended up saving 40% mass, and again, got that part consolidation from eight parts down to one. The benefit is really to be able to uh, explore the design space in a much more efficient way than you can using a traditional approach. We get multiple designs within a short amount of time, which is a feasible solution to our problem, which would could probably take a normal engineer weeks to figure that out. GM has traditionally always been a leading innovator in the industry and it's great to see them adopting these new technologies and seeing how it applies to their business and to their customers. We feel that there's huge benefits today, but then those benefits can really ramp up as we move into the future. Really the opportunities for GM around additive manufacturing are endless. New design possibilities, new material applications, it is a new frontier. This brings us to trend number five, virtual reality. You've seen the goggles. Virtual reality is totally immersive, meaning it fills your entire field of vision and feels like you're inside the created environment. Whereas augmented reality layers graphics on top of your view of the real world, but it's more than a video game or a gimmick. Now an expert in the office can virtually show someone in the field how a part works or how to repair it remotely. Augmented reality is being used to display instructions to assembly and maintenance technicians in real time. Here's an example of what this looks like. Virtual reality and augmented reality truly offers the ability to complement and share human knowledge. Trend number six, data exchange and manufacturing technologies. You may remember this phrase from our earlier definition of industry 4.0.
the trend of automation and data exchange in manufacturing technologies. But what does it mean? Well, it's referring mainly to two technologies, cloud computing and data analytics. Data exchange and manufacturing technologies. Exchanging data means you have to store and transfer all that data and then actually use it. That's what makes everything we've talked about today possible. It's how all those sensors powering the industrial internet of things share data. And it's how the engineering tool lets engineers work from anywhere. Cloud computing. You've heard of server farms. It's storing all of our data someplace else instead of on your own computers and owning local services, servers. Cloud computing benefits. Significantly increased storage space, economies of scale, increased IT security, forecasting to meet market demands, improving quality control while staying energy efficient and cost effective. This brings us to data analytics. Collecting all the data in the cloud is great, but it doesn't matter much if you don't glean insights from it. A lot of the data analytics benefits are similar to those we discussed in cloud computing, such as product quality and defects tracking, supply planning, manufacturing process defect tracking, supplier components and parts defect tracking, supplier performance data to inform contract negotiations, output forecasting, increased energy efficiency, testing and simulation of new manufacturing processes, and support for mass customization of manufacturing. Analytics is how all of this gathered data is turned into improvements. So with all that technology, what is the most important? People. Of course, people still matter. No business can thrive without good people driving the company forward. Our last trend is a constant work in progress. With all of these innovations coming together at once, the need for tech-savvy employees continues to increase. Recruiting. Young tech workers are often motivated by perks beyond salary that previous generations may not have seen as options, such as things like flex time, challenging assignments, and professional development. Many seek careers that provide a sense of personal fulfillment to make a clear link between the role and your company's greater purpose. Beyond competition with tech companies for talent, many manufacturers are planning for the future by offering mentorships and paid internship programs, and even collaborating with local colleges and high schools to encourage students to pursue STEM careers. Training. If there aren't enough new workers out there, it only makes sense to make the most of the talent you already have. The workforce that used to do mostly hard manual labor can help solve these big problems. After all, they know your process and pain points best, but companies have to invest in and be open to training. Tips for effective training. The trick is to make that training really engaging to ensure it pays off. Just like this presentation, Make it easily digestible in bite-sized chunks, not long, boring lectures. And make it mobile. Just think about how much time we all spend on our phones, so meet people where they already are. Ask for their opinion and work to implement solutions, both how they think the job could be done better and how your training can be improved. If you build a culture of continuous learning and ideally become a place where people gain skills they can't get elsewhere, your people will feel challenged and rewarded, and the word will spread. Recommendations. So everyone, we have only had a brief moment to share an overview of information on these very large topics. Are you feeling excited, overwhelmed, possibly a bit of both? Here are a few strategies for you. One, experiment. You don't have to rush out and retrofit an entire factory. Start with one line, or even one station. The term continuous improvement accurately describes these ongoing transformations. Next, talk to your business partners. Find out, find out what's working for them or what do they wish you were doing. And finally, create spaces to listen to your employees. 
give them opportunities to grow along with your technical prowess. Okay, so it's time for Q&A. Um, and I'm, I'm seeing here um, some of the comments that if you have already submitted questions about the engineering tool, I do have a short demo that I should be able to pull up here that should answer some of those showing some of the additional functionality. And here it comes. Hello and welcome to a quick demonstration of the ETIM engineering tool, an online and web-based design and engineering software. The engineering tool is pretty easy to use. Just select from one of the categories in our product catalog, drag and drop it into the 3D scene, rotate the view, move the camera, zoom in or zoom out, add accessories like you needed for your design. And our software still supports you that only fitting and compatible products will come together. That means this knucklefoot M5 by 45 will be changed automatically to a knucklefoot M12, M10, or M8 as soon as it's imported into your design. If I would like to change the orientation, I can either click this button or hit the Alt, rotate it, move it to the side and add a new profile. Now you see it's not able to connect. Why? Because our profiles need a fastener to be connected. Of course, I could select a fastener, import it to my profile, and now add this profile to the other one, and now they are connected. But there's a more easier way. So I delete the fastener, select from preferred fastener, my standard one, take my profile, drag and drop it to the right position, enter a value, and that's it. Now with the double click, I can select all of these profiles, and I'll see here one standard fastener, copy, and as soon as it's connected, there are three fasteners. Again, a double click, Lovely product selected, copy and paste, so Control C, Control V on the keyboard, rotate it, place it, fix the dimension, and that's it. And now I could change this value here, so this 200 or this 200, or at least the height, or I can make a double click on my design. And now you see all of these arrows. Now I can stretch the size of my design. And now I've got another size. If I now change from standard to universal fastener, I can add a couple of profiles. And as well, different profiles. <coughs> And you see, now we've got six universal fasteners at this point. So now I can make a multi-selection, so either we hit this button or the control key on my keyboard. Stretch it until the surface gets bright green. Now it's connected and I can resize my design. As well, I could use this at this point if I do not want to measure or to calculate. Just import a profile, connect it, and that's it. <clears throat> you now say, okay, now I would like to change all of my light profiles to heavy ones because the lord of my table is a little bit heavier. You can go to the summary, click the profiles, change the design, from light to stem. Now you haven't seen anything because these products, they look pretty the same from the outside. But if I change the color from aluminum to black, you see all of them are changed at the same time. We go to the next page. <clears throat> 
that's our summary page. And here you can give your project a name, demo, description, demo video, design consisting of 11 profiles, 40 by 40 light, one profile, 80 by 40, eight standard and 16 universal fasteners, including accessories and supplied as a construction kit. So we will do the cut-offs, the drillings, the tappings, and you will do the assembling. If you would like to have it pre-assembled by us, just give us a call and information. As well, we can download CAD data, and I won't show you this button here, but I will present you our video tutorial now. Just click it, enter what you're looking for into the search slot, see the video, click it, now you see it's a YouTube video, which gives you all of the information which are necessary. And now the cat box is open to you. It's the same cat box from our website. And from here you can choose to export it to a neutral format, like such step, I just pass solid, or even graphic formats. Or you can choose the direct import into your SolidWorks, Solid Edge Inventor, ProEngineer, Cartier, or the But maybe one of the biggest benefits of the engineering tool is the project documentation. If I click on Download Documentation, and Fully Comprehensive, Create now. If you ask yourself, how long would it take for you to create a complete drawing for this small table? Usually I get the answer, oh, around about 30 minutes. But ask yourself, what will be the content of this drawing? Dimensions, maybe the cutoff length, a bill of material, and that's it. Our project documentation provides much more information than this couple of things which you are creating usually in your CAD system. When it's done, this was around about one minute, you can download it as a PDF file or you can directly open it in your web browser. You can see your friend here, project name, project ID, description, link into a project view and an isometric view. The overview of the content of this documentation, bill of material, and here you can see a unique ID and as well unique ID for profiles with the same product number and the same length. Why? The answer is easy. Even profiles with the same length can have different machines. In the upcoming pages, we will see for each profile with a unique number, the machining plan, so the machining table, machining drawings, for all of the machinings, the control view, and this, together with the information about how often it needs to be created and produced, is done by our software for every profile which is used in our design. When I come to the end, we've got an isometric view with the inner and outer dimensions. A multi-view projection, where you can see this information again. And an exploded view. And here you can see for every single machine profile a unique ID. And for every spare part, only the positioning one. And on the upcoming pages, we'll give you assembly instructions. So start with part 6 and 3. Take four of these fasteners at this position and assemble it step by step until your frame is completely done. This has been a basic presentation of our ATEM engineering tool. I hope you enjoyed it. Have fun by using the tool by yourself. Have a great day and goodbye.
thank you everyone for your time. Uh, and uh, I think you really are going to want to check that one out. We appreciate your time and hope you found this webinar to be a valuable experience.